Hello people, and welcome back to part 48 of Big Easier, the City of Skylines build guide. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. And we are starting today's episode hanging out by the highway, uh, where it's very, very busy at the moment. And today's episode, which you probably guessed by the title, is going to be a complete and utter overhaul of the public transport system that currently uh, serves Big Easier. So the point of this episode is... As you grow and expand your city and you add new road networks in and kind of new, new highway entrances and exit, you will either forget to add in those public transport networks or the transport networks that you had in there already will become a little bit redundant because there's more efficient ways to get public transport around the area and you know you just need to factor in that new infrastructure uh, that you have done. It's always a good thing to do this. So, for example, you can see here, as we've kind of expanded out of the suburbs of Braithwaite, there's no public transport serving these guys. You know, this the stuff right here is perfect for a bus line uh, to bring people back into the train station and the tram lines. You know, over here as well, uh, we've got nothing serving these guys. And uh, over by the oil town as well, there's nothing serving these. And uh, there's very limited public transport uh, within the new downtown area. And, uh, you know, obviously we need, we're still building this, so that's fine. Uh, and then over here as well, you know, you can see there's a lot of kind of empty spaces and patches uh, that we've got in and around the downtown area. So, and up here as well, what you could do with the bus line through here. And a few of the places around here as well. So what we're going to do today is overhaul that. And we're also going to be building uh, a new train station too. Um, on the live stream on Saturday, we were getting some trains backing up here. So during that live stream, if I fly over here momentarily. Uh, we kind of rebuilt the rail line here uh, as to where it connects uh, up to the outside. So right here. So we were getting a whole bunch of trains backing up here. And I believe that was because we were mixing um, external trains. So people like these guys that are coming from outside of the map, bringing tourists and sims into the city. Uh, our own passenger lines and uh, industrial rail cargo uh, were all being mixed on the same line and that was causing them to back up and not properly uh, leave the city uh, which is of course not really ideal for what we want. So today's episode is going to be a little bit kind of choppy because we're going to be working with a whole bunch of um, different transport lines. So I'm going to go ahead and delete every single transport line in the city. Uh, we're going to rebuild uh, a new train station here uh, to separate the internal Bagusia rail away from the external international rail and uh, yeah it should be quite fun and hopefully you guys will enjoy it so uh, we'll be right back once we've cleared out all of these public transport lines also um, a good barometer of your public transport if you can have around 10% of your total residents and tourists using your public transport then you're doing um, a pretty decent job with it. We're a little under 10% at the moment, uh, which is fine. So we'll take this number in here uh, and then we'll we'll see what we're like once we've overhauled the public transport system and uh, see if we can improve it a little. Okay, guys, so every public transport line in the city has been deleted. Uh, there is now no more public transport in the city at all. Uh, all the lines are empty and, uh, you know, it looks a little bit weird to see all these little... Uh, buildings without being interconnected. Uh, so for right now, if we were to play the game right now, uh, the roads would become crazy, crazy busy. So we're going to leave it on pause uh, until we kind of build a new uh, rail interchange here. So on the entrance to the oil town, which we started a few episodes ago now, um, we've just kind of upgraded this into a roundabout here. It previously was just uh, kind of a right angle connection here. Uh, so this will help uh, traffic flow a little bit easier. And we will be building a town kind of, you know, in the outskirts at the foot of this mountain uh, at some point as well. Uh, we do have a lot of farmland over here too, so we'll definitely do something with that at some point. Uh, so let's go ahead and build in a rail interchange of where our two train lines will switch over. So this is going to be the point uh, where Sims will be able to switch from the internal Bagusia rail onto the external rail and vice versa. So let's bring a nice road out here, and then we're going to make this place quite nice as well. So let's have, let's use some plazas. Let's go ahead and grab uh, plaza with picnic tables. 
Let's have one there like that. And then we'll bring a road up and alongside this. Let's bring this out by 20 blocks. And now how large is the rail station? Okay, that's going to work nicely. So we can get that guy to sit right in the middle. That's fine. Okay, and then we'll imitate that on the other side as well. So we came out by uh, 500. So, so make sure that we kind of reflect that plaza in there as well. The plaza is really just a decoration. You know, I'm not too bothered about people coming out here for uh, kind of recreation time. And then we'll bring this guy down as well. We'll probably upgrade these into one-way systems at some point as well. Okay. So, first of all, let's discuss the train lines. So currently, the external rail line can merge onto uh, this line here, which takes them into the downtown. Or they can merge onto this line here as well, which takes them into kind of the suburbs, and then eventually the downtown off in that direction. So for right now, we only want the external rail to be able to hook into this station. So that is what we are gonna do. So let's say if we bring this guy off, Bring them off at an angle like that. Let's actually bring it out of the station first. That'll give us a, a much smoother approach. And then we'll switch to our curve tool and bring them in like that. So that's fine. So right now, external trains will not be able to connect here either. If you're wondering, this line here, uh, this is for cargo. So we did this on the live stream. It now flows alongside the passenger rail all the way over past the dam. Down here you can see, now this is all cargo trains on this line, and then it splinters off out here, and then hooks up back into uh, the cargo port over here as well. And sorry about the quick look there, so I just have to answer uh, a quick phone call. I'm going to abandon building over here. Uh, let's do it that guy. Uh, yeah, so cargo line is currently all by itself, which I am happy with. That will uh, be flowing all right for the foreseeable to take cargo in and out of the city. So now we need to make sure that the inner city line is hooked up in one enormous loop. So we'll do that over here. And we should be able to hook these guys through. Let's delete some of these storage buildings. We can always replace them. Let's bring this guy through here. And then we should be able to come through here. Let's make sure we snip to the angle. Should be able to get through now. Yeah, we can delete this road. We are able to rebuild this stuff, it's no problem. So we'll come down here and keep heading along the bridge. It's going to make this area look a little bit more industrial as well, which will be nice. So currently this line here is passenger, which was hooking up to the external line, so we will delete that. And that's taken back a little bit there. There we go. Let's knock this guy back a little more as well. And we'll have a road guideline on, so we make sure we stay as parallel to this rail as possible. And then we'll bring that elevation step down too. Okay, that's going to give us a nice little bridge. So right now, uh, the Baguza rail network makes an enormous loop uh, up past the highway here. Flows into the downtown where the major transport hub can then distribute them uh, back onto that line which flows through here. Uh, joins up with the monorail station down here too and then flows all the way back through and around past the dam. So it's one giant circle at the moment, and that's going to ensure that all our sims can move from one side of the map to the other without any interference from external rail. However, we do want that external rail um, to be able to drop passengers off into the city. So as they arrive here, we're going to give them another train connection that brings them into this loop here. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so we'll mimic this exactly. Uh, and this will serve something of a town centre uh, for the new town that resides here eventually. But you know, we're a little ways off that yet. So we'll bring this guy in and then let's plan in uh, a little bit of a train network for this guy as well. Let's make sure all our snapping is on. And we'll delete this road here for right now. And then it'd probably be actually nice to have it kind of flow over the highway here. If we can get a nice little bridge. There we go. So that's going to be a nice little, uh, nice little feature. 
and then we'll get our freeform tool and then we'll begin to just slowly uh, bring him in line with the rest of the rail network and then switch to our freeform and then hop back up in there okay so for right now that's okay like he's hooked into this way here but um, for example, when we bring the train line down here, we won't be able to send him back off in this direction because obviously he can't make the turn back onto this lane here. So we're going to make kind of a little uh, triangle, uh, almost like interchange, I guess you could call it. I guess it is an interchange of sorts. Okay, so let's finish decorating our little, uh, little kind of train thing here. Let's go ahead and place a couple more of these in. How are we doing? There, uh, yeah, okay, that should be fine. Uh, let's link these guys over with a couple of bridges. Um, I think we're just gonna use the regular old paths for this right now. I'm not gonna use anything too fancy for this area just yet. And then we'll kind of come from each of these corners. So we'll come out right to the edge and then come up by three. And then we'll cross over and then right back down to the front of the station. And that's just gonna get our sims from one train station to the other uh, a little bit easier bring them over just like that and then we can possibly do some nice detailing if there's any kind of assets we can squeeze in here I do just have the paradox parser to use there's nothing that's quite essential uh, maybe there's something in a, maybe a dog park maybe yeah, a lot of this stuff is too big isn't it that's fine we can find something to fit in here maybe we can make our own little our own little parks using uh, some part life stuff where we'll definitely do that in a little bit of detailing as well so right now this is serving as a, a nice little train interchange between two lines. So one comes in here, so I'll switch over, and then they gain access into the internal rail. So let's go ahead now and replace our train lines in. So we'll start with the, the kind of the best form of transport, the, the most capacity and um, the, the longest distance and work our way down. So kind of from trains uh, to monorail, to trams, to buses, etc., And uh, of course, Metro as well. Uh, so this seems like a good place to start. Let's uh, start a line here. And then this guy is going to come down here. We're going to head past the University of Begusia. And then we're going to stop right here. And then we have a nice uh, train station in here. So we'll stop here too. And then we're going to come back down here. Now I want to make sure that there's going to be no crisscrossing of trains here. So it looks like we're okay. So that's the next station, and then the next station along here. So we do have a train station here, but I'm not going to hook that into this line. We'll probably leave that as a little express line, and we will hook that in eventually. And then we come all the way through here, and I think the next station along now is the actual downtown line itself. So let's make sure that we're coming off this one. So we'll add the stop there, and that's going to be perfect. Okay, and then we're going to head back along this line, and we're going to come into, uh, no, we've not missed the station, have we? Uh, no, we're good. Then we're going to come back here, and then all the way back into our new station, right here. So that's going to complete the line. That's going to be quite nice. So let's head over to the downtown transport hub again. And then we're going to link the other side up now. So on the next platform along, this guy comes out in this direction. And then he's going to head straight through here. Let's keep following the line. He's going to come straight through the new Baguzia downtown. Uh, he's going to stop here. And he's going to head all the way over into the new town. Uh, when we kind of develop these areas around here a little bit, we may add a station in here for the National Park. Uh, but, you know, we can just factor that in as we come along. Uh, then he's going to come into here. And then he's going to head back the way that we came. And that's going to do uh, two nice long train lines for us. However, I do want to add in a couple of expressways now. So there are a couple of train stations that haven't been filled in. So I'm going to start a line on uh, this stretch here. Is it this one we need to follow? No, it's this one, isn't it? 
So uh, it's getting the comp the uh, structure is becoming denser and denser right now. So it's a little more difficult to follow all the different train lines. And then we're going to come down here and then hook into the monorail station. So that's just going to serve as a nice way across from each side of the downtown for our Sims. Now, rather than carrying him on into the oil industry station and the interchange, we're not going to do that. We're simply going to have him return back into the downtown station, just like that. So that's nice and easy. So that's going to be a little express line, and it's going to also alleviate the pressure on this bridge a little bit too, uh, because people will be able to take the train across the river rather than having to drive, because at the minute they would have no other option. So having taken a look at how the rail is going to flow, I think we're going to delete this train station. If you look at it, even when the public transport lines were active, it had six passengers last week. Um, people are much preferring to use this train station here. Um, so it doesn't really make sense for us to have another one so close by. So we are going to delete this rail line uh, and then just leave it as kind of the main national rail that's going to flow uh, between the University of Technology and the downtown area. So that'll be fine. Uh, and then what we can actually do with this place here, uh, we have a bunch of tram lines nearby. Uh, and they do kind of go off in different directions. So there's one that comes through here and stops by the park. And there's also one that heads over to the baseball stadium here too, alongside this tram interchange. Uh, and that's exactly what we're going to do, is we're going to make a little tram interchange here for the, for the multiple lines to converge. And then switch over with one another. Okay. So previously they were all kind of stopping on this main road here, which uh, isn't great for traffic, you know, there's going to be a lot of uh, trams and people crossing the pedestrian highways. Uh, so it's not really what we want to do. So let's delete this little path here. And we'll definitely have some nice paths uh, linked in here as well. Okay, so I'm going to come out. Let's have a look. How, how much room do we actually have to play with here? Let's delete this as well. And this for right now. So this is more than big enough for a tram interchange. So let's have a look at what lines we need to converge here. So there's this line here, and then this line over here, and then there's also one that flows out from this direction as well, which is fine. So from this direction here, we'll have this as a one-way tram road. Okay, so I think rather than roundabouts, I'm actually going to have little blocks. It's all about trial and error here, making sure that we make the most of our room. So I'm going to come out just a little further to 130. So we'll go to that guy as well. And then we'll switch to our one way. And we'll have 135. Let's make a little tram turnaround loop. That should be okay. It's a little shorter. What was the distance here? 135. There we go. Just something nice and simple like that. And then we need to do the same for this guy as well. Uh, so what was the distance here now? 520. Should be able to reach that. And then we'll do the same here again as well. With a little tram turnaround loop, just like that. So let's go ahead and hook these guys together. And of course we'll do some nice detail in here as well. Uh, what kind of paths have we used here before? We've used the part paths, okay, so we'll continue that trend. Uh, let's have one hooking these guys up and again from this corner over to this one and that's going to allow people to move kind of seamlessly between the three tram lines uh, it'll stop them having to walk back down onto the street here and up through there okay and um this seems like a nice place for some large uh, low density commercial as well okay so let's add these tram lines back in right now. Apologies if this isn't your kind of episode. Um, I know we have had a couple of uh, public transport questions recently, so hopefully this will help with those. Uh, and yeah, let's just go ahead and clear traffic. Um, no, not uh, just so I can get rid of uh, the current trams, so I'm not confusing myself. Uh, okay, so let's begin at the end of this tram loop over here. So we currently have flows through the end of the uh, residential area. There's also one that flows up to the ziggurat garden as well. So we'll begin here. 
this guy's going to come up. So with trams, it's a pretty similar stop frequency to buses. A stop every two to three blocks is pretty acceptable. And um, also nearby your important buildings as well. So we're going to bring this guy up to here. Let's see, let's bring him a little further up because the tram interchange isn't too far away. So he's then going to flow through here and he'll stop there. And then here as well. And then we'll bring him into the statue. Uh, there's a little path here. Oh, no, not that. So you can stop there as well. That's going to allow them to walk over to that side. Uh, and then into around the parks here. We've got a bunch of park assets here, so people use the tram to get to those. Uh, and then once more here. There's a couple of blocks in between there. Uh, and then we'll come back up this way and make use of our little uh, one-way tram line here. And then we'll stop here as well. And then he's going to come back into the interchange. And then we're going to mirror his stops all the way back. So that's going to be a nice tram line uh, from kind of this side of town to the town centre, which is going to be great. So the second tram line needs to make use of some of these roads that we don't have in here. So we'll do that as well and factor them into the ziggurat garden over here too. So let's start from here. Seems like a good stop. And then we're going to come up the main street. We're going to stop on a second lane within the tram interchange. And then we're going to bring him into the ziggurat garden and the nightlife stuff. And then back down here as well. Uh, and then we'll bring him onto these lines here because these currently aren't being used. And then we'll have him come. You can probably just complete his line like that. That's fine. So that actually makes this road here redundant. We don't need to be. Um, what are the other roads around here? One with grassy banking. So this road here doesn't need to be tram anymore. There we go. So there's two tram lines here. So it's a really good idea to name your tram lines. Just name them to the districts that they flow to and from. Uh, and colour coordinate as well if you like. Um, it can just help make you keep track of them uh, a little bit easier. So uh, I won't force you guys to watch that. I'll do that off camera. Uh, but it will just help uh, keep track uh, a little bit easier too. Okay, so we'll come back into the second tram line here now. Uh, and this guy is going to flow around here isn't he and then into here okay so we'll have him stop here and then he's going to come by the main street here he's going to have a stop there because he's right near the metro and also a bunch of the town square assets as well and then where is, is he going to flow now we'll bring him down here and he can stop by the high schools and the park there's a lot of uh, interesting assets there for sims to use and then he's going to come back through the town square We'll have him stop outside the library. And then he can come back and complete his line there. So it's only a small tram loop, but it's going to get people around uh, into some interesting assets around here as well. Uh, so this also means that this road here no longer needs to be tram line. So we can upgrade that guy. It's going to help create a little bit more uh, diversity in this town square as well, which will be nice. Okay, so that's that tram line there done. And then of course we need to uh, hook up these guys into this side as well. So we'll begin here. Uh, and we did have a whole bunch of people waiting at a stop right here. So we'll add one back in there as well. And then we're crossing the Divergent Diamond. We're stopping outside the University of Technology. We'll also stop outside the train station. So again, you know... Bear in mind as well, leaving stops next to each other is going to allow people to move between transport lines a lot easier. So if people wanted to get on the train line, they could just take the tram and hop over. And people getting uh, off the train here will also be able to hop onto the tram as well. So we'll leave it a few more blocks and then we'll stop outside some of the commercial here. We'll head into the tram park and of course we'll stop um, in Foggy Meadows as well. And then there's a school here too, and then these are a little close, but I'm not too bothered. 
um, I'll just have them mirror one another heading back across into the town centre and then he can complete his line right there. Okay, so that's the major Braithwaite tram lines done. I'm happy with that. Uh, so we now need to add in uh, some remaining tram lines that we have left empty. Uh, so we have one out here by the University of Begusia. So again, right outside the train station is going to allow people to move um, between the two transport lines a lot easier. And then we're going to have this guy move around the University campus in a number of places. So he's stopping here. Uh, there's a path here through, so that's going to allow people to move to the other street a lot easier. Uh, you can stop here as well. And um, there's stadiums by here, so it makes sense for the Sims to be able to stop here as well. That's going to uh, get really busy. Uh, we'll stop once more inside the campus, and then we'll have one over here as well. That's be a nice little uh, train line to uh, tram line to serve the campus. So obviously we have all these spaces here that are left unserviced by public transport. Uh, these are perfect for buses, so when we get to our bus lines we will definitely return here and uh, pop in some bus lines as well. And I'm pretty sure that only remaining, no, we have a couple more remaining tram lines, don't we? Yeah, there's all the downtown ones here as well. So we already have a pre-built tram interchange here, which is uh, ideal. Okay, so we have one that flows to the commercial park. So let's have him start from here. And then he's going to flow over the bridge. He's going to stop a couple of times within the financial sector. All the way along here. And outside here. And I'm going to have a stop here as well. It's not necessary. It's just for aesthetic purposes. To see the tram stop either side of the park. And you, you don't need to do that if you're doing your tram lines. Unless you kind of want them to mirror each other. Uh, and I'm going to mirror this guy all the way back in. And then he's going to be filtered back into his system there as well. So we do also have another one down here as well that serves the central park, uh, so we can do that too. So let's have a central park line that also starts on this roundabout here. He's then going to flow over and stop a little further along here. So we do have a tram square here as well, so we'll factor that in. We'll come by this way, we'll stop by this train station as well, and then mirror himself back up here. Uh, this would be a nice little spot actually for um, a one-way tram line through the middle, of course. We can't actually build because that guy is on fire. That's slightly annoying. Um, okay, let's just make a horrible temporary connection right now. We'll rebuild that road when um, when the fire has gone. So we'll add a stop in here. And then up into the Central Park. Again, happy with that. It's very close to one another. But to have them stop in the middle and then again on the um, by the water is going to look really nice. So we'll, we'll do that. That's okay. Uh, and then we'll bring him through there like that. And then I wonder if it's actually... Yeah, I think we'll merge these two lines. So that's going to give us one last tram line. So this guy's going to come along here. And then he's going to stop a couple of times within the green downtown. Uh, of course, at this tram interchange as well. Before making his way back uh, into the tram interchange here. So to complete that line, I wonder if we should actually move this line into there. So that's going to keep it flowing. So uh, this line here is redundant now. We don't need that one. And, uh, as is this one as well. Obviously, you no. Know, this is what I'm talking about. You'll find more efficient ways of doing things. And uh, you know, it will just begin to look a little bit nicer. Uh, okay, so that is the downtown tram line sorted. We can see how they're flowing around the infrastructure that we have placed in. Uh, and then there's one more tram line to do, uh, which is over here by the new uh, Begusia Beach. So we're going to come along the beach assets here. We'll stop once in the beach park. Uh, I'll stop a little further along as well so people can make use of the paths. Uh, buy a park asset here as well. Uh, we'll stop in the actual nightlife stuff. Uh, and then we'll come down alongside the beach, stopping at a couple of places. Stop at the little interchange we have there, a little tram roundabout. And then we're now going to come back through. And then we're going to head over into this side of the downtown. Stopping in the IT cluster park. 
and we'll also come by here as well. Let's have a look. So if we stop in there, we'll stop once more here, and then again just to mirror the stops. We're going to have him flowing around like that, and then we're going to start heading out, making sure we stop at a couple of places outside of the amusement park, and then that's going to round him off quite nicely. And so we did have a really nice suggestion of actually mirroring um, this route to not include the residential. So we'll do that as well. So I'm going to come ahead and drag this one in here. And I'm going to mirror every single stop, um, but heading back in the opposite direction. And he's also not going to stop in the tram interchange. I'm going to come by here down here, so he's not going to head into the residential we're just going to mirror each stop heading back alongside the beach and then hooking him up like that so we can do, so those were the last two tram lines that we placed so we know that uh, tram line 10 is here and then if we go to uh, tram line 9, it's right here as well so tram line 9 is going to be uh, totally white and then tram line 10 will be totally black. So you've got a nice little contrast between black and white lines there. It'll also help you separate them uh, a little bit easier. And you can see how they flow uh, between one another. It's not necessary really to do that. You know, it, it's just a nice little aesthetic purpose. Um, you know, this area is quite kind of like nice and free flowing. So I am happy to have that in there. Uh, okay, so I believe that is all the tram networks done. Everyone is all trammed up, and we should be good to move on to the next form, uh, which will be our monorail lines. So let's go ahead and sort out our monorail stuff. So we'll start with the smallest monorail lines over here, and uh, we'll go ahead and throw in... So this monorail line isn't yet finished. This will be hooked into our Liberal Arts College when we eventually get around to building that. So we're right here, and we're going to flow out down here. We're going to come and stop at the amusement park. Come back here as well. And then it's going to flow right back in. So that's a nice and easy one. And obviously, you know, these guys will be flowing off into the distance in the future when we eventually build that infrastructure. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of monorail stations uh, in and around the uh, kind of higher density downtown that we first built. So we're probably going to have a couple of monorail lines here. So let's have one that serves this line here. He's going to come into the residential. And then he's going to come via the stadiums and kind of the expo entertainment center. And then bring himself back in to hook in just like that. That's going to be great news for everybody. Then we're going to add a new line. And this guy's going to kind of come back around the outer edges. So we're going to have him flow through here. And then he's going to follow the line all the way through and come down here. And then we'll probably have him stop in here as well. And then he's going to head back into the interchange here as well. So that's going to be this monorail uh, sorted and organised. I'm pretty sure, is that the only monorail networks we have? Yeah, there's only a couple of systems in place at the moment. Uh, but we will be adding one a little further up alongside the hillside here too. So wonderful. Let's do our metro. So metro is really good. Um, uh, it's probably one of the most efficient um, net public transport systems uh, in the game alongside trains. Um, you can use your stops a little more frequently than trains. Um, but yeah, it's still, it's still really good. So we're going to start off by the zoo here down at Braithwaite. And we're just going to stop at every single station of course. That's why we have them placed in. And Metro is really good at getting your sims from uh, one transport line to the next. So now we come to a bit of a, a Metro interchange here. So we need to decide what we're going to do. So this one right now is heading from Braithwaite. And I'm pretty sure that I want this one to be heading uh, straight into the transport hub. And then he's going to head all the way back as well. So we're going to add him a stop, so that's going to give him a nice little circuit. Uh, in terms of kind of the frequency of the stations, um, see this bit here from the forest industry down to the baseball stadium, 
you could probably squeeze another one in here, maybe down this side of the industry. I'm not going to do it, um, but you can squeeze another one in there as well if you wanted to. And then down here, and then he's going to complete his line. So that's going to give him one express, express line. Uh, if you think metros in real life, they kind of travel in relatively straight lines wherever they go into. They don't kind of curve from district to district. Uh, that's when it's kind of a good idea uh, to start setting up other lines. Uh, okay, so let's have a look at the downtown metro infrastructure that we have here as well. All right, so that is the Riverside downtown metro network completed, which I'm happy with. And it looks as though we were actually planning to expand out the metro this way, but that never ended up happening. So we will uh, delete these supporting lines that we have along here. Uh, yeah, it looks like we have one here as well. Let's delete this guy. All the way along here. Okay. It's interesting to see what kind of projects you forget to do as uh, you build in the city. Okay, so we've got one more metro station here in the transport hub that isn't being used. So we're going to bring this guy uh, via the stadiums. And again, you can see how the placement of the two stations is ideal. They are able to switch from one method to the next. And then this public transport line is going to come down into the industrial area. He's going to come down into the, the port. And it looks as though we had uh, a little bit of infrastructure planned out there, which uh, we'll, we'll do that when we come to build that side of the town. Uh, and then he is going to come back and mirror his stops all the way along. So that means that this line here is redundant. And that's going to allow three metro lines to converge on the same point, which is going to be great for interchanging uh, different methods of public transport, which is great news. Uh, is that all our metro tunnels filled? I'm sure it is. We haven't set up the metro network here yet. And uh, we will do that when we come to fill out the suburbs here. And everyone is sorted around here. And we won't be having metro uh, in these kind of far out sections. And, you know, the, the university won't be serviced by metro. They will have to rely on train and tram travel. Wonderful. So that now leaves, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so we have our monorail. Uh, our ferry lines, of course. Don't forget the ferries. So ferries are not the most efficient method of transport. I find them more for aesthetic purposes. You guys might disagree with that. Maybe you've had more luck with them than I have. I just find them a little bit, um, you know, it's a little bit kind of unimportant, really. <laughs> uh, so we'll come from here, from the National Park Village. Uh, we're going to stop by the Bagusia Falls. And then this guy is going to come into the ferry stop on Bagusia Island. And then he is going to come back and link his stops together to complete the line. So that's going to be ferry stop one. So I'm kind of using this as the main ferry port right now. So we'll create another one here as well. So this guy is going to come out and down here, uh, which actually makes this ferry line redundant. Oh, don't delete the ones that you actually need though. There we go. So then he is going to carry on via here into the riverside downtown and then mirror his stops all the way back there's a strange uh, connection there isn't there let's see if we can tidy this up a little let's, um, let's bring these guys in and then this line here is just for where our ferries can enter the actual line itself, so that will uh, correct itself in a moment when we hit play. Uh, so that's fine. And then there's one remaining ferry terminal. We'll probably have one further along here as well to service the oil industry town. Okay, that's going to complete the ferry line nicely. Uh, and then we'll have one more that is going to serve the lake. This guy is going to come through, and then he's just going to head back to the island as well. So that's going to be our ferry sorted. Again, ferries aren't the greatest thing in the world, at least in my experience. Maybe you guys have had major success with them, um, you know, but they're really just for kind of, you know, they're a nice and kind of showpiece to have ferries moving around your waters, uh, kind of your open waters, makes them feel a little more alive. Uh, but yeah, otherwise, I don't really find too much use out of them. 
Okay, and now we come on to kind of the final and smallest method of public transport, uh, which is our bus lines. So we can see now as we kind of zoom out, we have all these big uh, kind of important uh, public transport lines. Monorail, probably not as important as the other ones as train, uh, tram and uh, metro. Uh, but they are still very useful. And if you find that your bus lines are getting busy, it's probably a good sign to upgrade them into uh, trams. So anyway, we're going to start here. Uh, back at the beginning of Bagusia on, the, uh, on Bagusia Island. It's been a long time since we built this place. Uh, okay, so we're going to start by uh, good old Schwartz Park. And uh, we're going to start a nice little uh, residential line here. That's going to start flowing uh, around these residential parks. We're going to come down here. Why is this road one way? Oh, it looks like I've accidentally upgraded it. Did not remember doing that. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's come down here. So again, a, a stop every two or three blocks is usually a good sign. Uh, a good kind of standard to stick to. You know, so we're not going down every single street, you know, because people, sims will walk, um, within a certain radius. What that radius is, I'm not entirely sure. It is quite far. Um, but as for how the AI reads that distance, I, I couldn't tell you. I'm sorry, I'm not super sure on that. Uh, okay, and then we're going to come alongside here. Uh, we're going to come down the high street. We're going to stop by the green parks and the high school. Uh, and then we'll come back into the more residential and hook him up there as well. So that's going to include a lot of our residential here too. However, I do want to have a few more bus lines to part in from this main street and this is going to take us uh, into the ferry stop. So we'll come down the roundabout here. No, not there. We need to come onto the beach. There we go. Uh, and then we're going to stop outside of the ferry depot again. It's all about letting them interchange between one uh, line to another. There is actually a ferry bus uh, depot. Uh, which one is it? It's an interchange. Yeah, so the ferry and bus exchange stop. Um, it seems to be bugged on my game. Um, I can't actually get them to move in uh, no matter what happens. So you guys might have a little more success with that, but I'm just going to carry on uh, using these lines here. So this guy is coming down here and we're going to actually bring him so we're actually going to delete that stop right there. And then we're going to have him carry on down the beach. And then he's going to... Where can we bring him out here? Okay, and we'll have him stop here by uh, the little national park that we've got going on. And then he's going to take the expressway into the farms. And then he's going to come back and complete his line on the island. So such a small space like the island, uh, buses will be okay um, for moving them back and to. It's totally fine. And they have the ferry to get on and off the island uh, without having to take uh, the highway. So let's come over to Braithwaite Square. So obviously we have these big rings of residential and a whole bunch of suburban stuff here that hasn't really been served by much public transport. So I'm going to start my bus line really close to this tram stop. Uh, and then this guy is going to come down the main street. He's going to stop a little further up here as well. And then we're going to have him create a little bit of a loop uh, around these streets here. So he's going to come by here, by right here as well. So you can kind of see as you place the stops and um, the radius of which it makes them happy is a kind of a good barometer to stick to. And we'll have him stop by here as well. There is some little kind of mountain paths here that take people up. So rather than bringing the, the stops up here onto the hill they're able to walk between the roads uh, really easily. So we'll have one right by there as well. Let's have a little look-see here. Let's bring him down by here. And then here again. And then link him back up at the park. So we're going to serve these guys with a nice little loop as well. So in terms of Braithwaite Parks, these guys, they're in walking distance within these stops. Uh, and they're also nearby to Metro, which is going to get them into the downtown. And also, um, they're not too far from the tram interchange loops as well. Uh, so we're pretty happy with those guys. 
uh, being as they are for the moment. Uh, we do still need some supporting lines over here, so we're probably going to link these two suburbs with a, a bus stop. So let's have a bus right by the tram interchange. So that's going to keep them flowing um, between different methods of transport. And we're going to bring this guy in here. And what's his fastest way to get into this side? Okay, so we'll bring him via here. And then he's going to cross over. Let's actually bring his stop down a little further. We'll have him kind of make some rows in and around these suburbs here. And then he can stop by the high street. And then he's going to take another detail back through here. So he's going to take the highway. And then this is going to allow him to seamlessly slip back into uh, our town square. So he's going to have a nice little turnaround here. Be cool to see some uh, buses stop in in front of here too. So let's go ahead and delete that stop right there. And then we'll drag this stop uh, right outside the town centre. So that way we're going to get some people stopping here. And it's also going to alleviate a little bit of congestion with buses stopping uh, on this main road right here too. So we're just supporting the suburbs right now with some nice bus lines and we've also got um you know this suburb here um you know it's supported by the tram line it doesn't need a bus line uh, that really would just kind of be a waste okay so we'll do the same with these suburbs here as well so kind of the lower density area that you're trying to serve um you know the smaller the public transport should be so this guy's going to run alongside the university and we'll make sure he's mirroring the tram stops. That's going to make them a little easier to switch between these two methods of public transport. I'm going to bring him down here. And then we can probably put him back through there as well. So again, we can see now we're just supporting the suburb with a nice bus line. That's going to allow them to move on to bigger and better methods of public transport. Uh, as for the downtown, uh, your roads are already so busy. I'm not a huge fan of buses within the downtown space, but we will add some in, um, especially for kind of these big, dense suburbs here. So we'll start kind of at one corner, and then we'll have him flow uh, across a few different areas. So we'll have him uh, come over here. So actually, no, let's, uh, let's delete that line. We'll start on this corner because there is one way systems in place here as well. So from this corner here, uh, he's going to come up to the main street, uh, stopping right by the monorail station. And then he's going to come down here. And then up here. And then we're going to have him come up right here. And then via the main road outside the stadia. And then we're going to bring him back on a loop via there. And then let's see here. We'll have him come down here and then hook him up. So that's going to give that nice little blue line. It's just going to weave between the residentials and hook them into the monorail. And the metro stops up here as well which is going to allow to get around a little easier. We're also going to move this one up a little bit further and then delete this one. So there's just one stop on this main road. Keep the buses flowing uh, as fast and as smooth as possible. Uh, as for here, this area right now isn't really big enough to, to really justify another bus stop. Uh, we'll see how it goes. And we'll probably have... Yeah, I think we will. Um, so where are our bus station here? Uh, so let's have a little look and make sure we aren't missing anything major. I think we'll have one uh, that serves the Riverside downtown. So from this guy here, he's going to leave the transport hub. And then he's going to head into our nightlife area. And then he's going to come into the green downtown. He's going to come out via the bridge, and then he's going to make a little uh, loop 
around the riverside stuff. I'll bring him down here. He can then come and stop by the ferry station. And make a loop back down the main road coming nearby to the metro. And then he can stop by the park here. And then we're going to bring him uh, back into the transport hub. And we're going to use our stagger lanes here to uh, make him stop. And then he's going to come back into the bus station and complete his line. So I'm also going to use this bus station for a couple of kind of long haul bus lines that don't have access to major networks like train or monorail. So we're going to start a new line here. And then we're going to have one bus that solely goes to the island and back. So it's kind of like a long haul for those that live in England uh, and maybe elsewhere in the world. Um, think of it almost as like a National Express coach. You know, it isn't stopping every two blocks. It's going from city to city. Uh, so that's kind of the idea that I want to kind of implement here. And we're going to bring this guy. Let's see. So if we brought him off here, we can stop him there. And then we can see he's following the highway. And then we're just going to bring him straight back into the um, to us actually bring him via here. We're going to bring him a stop this way. And then we're going to get him to stop here as well. That's just going to help stagger the bus lines a little bit. I know we can delete that one now as well, so he's going to flow through this area. Okay, let's see if there's any other kind of destinations that justify a long haul bus. I would probably say the National Park. You know, it's pretty common to be able to get a bus into the National Park. It's a big uh, tourist hotspot. So we'll we'll grab um, another bus line here as well. Now let's see where is our National Park. We are over here. Okay. So we'll have him stop here. Yeah, and then he has a perfect little turnaround point in this bit here. Uh, and then we can have him actually flow uh, back through here. So we'll have him come and stop outside of this major transport hub as well. Uh, and then he's going to jump back on the highway and come back here. So yeah, he will take the highway if we bring him this way, will he? Yes, he will. Uh, he'll actually come back down this road, which is perfect because I want him to uh, come and stop by here. Let's change the direction of this road here. Let's upgrade him. Okay, let's go ahead and grab our last stop. It is by the uh, monorail station. There we go. So head back over. Then he's going to come back into our bus filter system and then drop him back off at the station. Okay. So what I'm going to do, guys, now is I'm going to go ahead and press play. And uh, we'll kind of see. Um, obviously, you know, we're about to have a whole bunch of new trams um, and buses leave the tram and bus depots so traffic will be pretty crazy immediately while they all kind of spill out and disperse along their lines and um, I'll, I'll let them flow for 10 minutes or so uh, whilst I go ahead and name them all and uh, colour coordinate them and then we'll come back and see uh, if we've had any improvement uh, on the numbers of 4,460 residents and 1,710 tourists uh, per week of using the public transport uh, now they are a little more efficiently placed around the city and uh, giving support to some previous areas that didn't have access to public transport. So, we'll be right back. Okay guys, so I finished um, renaming all the public transport lines and uh, colour coordinating them, <laughs> which took a lot longer than I would have liked it to. Uh, we'll definitely decorate this tram interchange as well, and um, we'll either do it in a time lapse before the start of next episode, uh, or we'll do it in a live stream at some point as well, and go ahead and decorate some of the other interchanges as well, so they look quite nice. But prime example here, how you can see of making these interchanges has worked out wonderfully. As we leave the um, the time lapse plane here, we can see how people are moving between the different lines and getting off at one and coming onto the other. So uh, that's worked out really nicely. Um, let's have a little look see here at our public transport lines. So we're now at 5,152 um, of our residents per week using the public transport and 1,297 tourists, so still a little under 10%, uh, but it is a lot better uh, than what it was, and obviously it will fluctuate 
um, and change as kind of the days and the weeks go by and you'll see as to what that figure eventually ends up resting at. Uh, just to have a quick overview here, um, let's go ahead and take a look at our lines overview. Um, if you click on the passengers here at the top, it will sort it by you know which are the busiest lines. So I can see that uh, T1, uh, Centre, Town Centre into Primrose Park is the busiest. So I can say, right, okay, so let's make sure that they have adequate support. And um, if I come and find a tram here, and then we click on line details, uh, we can see how full the trams are. So it's okay at the moment. Uh, there's still plenty of room on the trams, and there's no station that's mega packed. So just go through and do this for each of your tram, uh, each of your new stops and lines. Uh, you can see that the express coach to Baguzi Island, I've also named them kind of, you know, um, oh, apart, I forgot to do bus line 9, I'll do that off camera. <laughs> uh, you know, naming them, giving them a number um, makes it a little more like real life, at least in England, you know, it's kind of the bus has a number and then the place of where it's going to after it. So I've done that with a couple of these as well. You, know, you see we've got the uh, tram line 3, for example, has the town centre and the uh, Bugusia University of Technology. Um, so we can have a look at that one as well. Uh, which will come over here and make sure that this guy has enough people. So there's still room on the trams, people are still being picked up. And, uh, you know, so just make sure, go through each one, um, each public transport method, and make sure that your people, like we can see here, that the, the oil coast downtown via the University of Bagusia line is extremely busy right now. Um, which is great news, of course, uh, but we need to make sure that we have the room. Uh, so there are still some room on the trains, most of them are full. You know, this stop right here has 539 people waiting at it. Uh, we can see that, you know, it's not quite dealing with the demand, so maybe um, up this line by a couple more trains just to help these people move along a little bit faster. Um, but we can see now that we have no backup along the lines that we experienced, and we can come back over to our new area here as well. You know, these guys are getting dropped off um, by external trains, and they're then switching over uh, to these guys here. Uh, interesting enough, they're not actually using the bridges, um, but that is because, uh, thank you to a great tip from uh, Matthew Howard. Um, if we oh, actually know, uh, let's just go ahead and, and uh, change those back. Uh, and then it oh, looks like we're a little bit short here to uh, add in a pedestrian crossing. Uh, although I'll go ahead and do that off camera. I'm sure there is a way to add a pedestrian crossing in uh, via traffic manager. Uh, I'm pretty sure there is no way. But yeah, we'll make sure that they can uh, cross the roads here um, so they can kind of use the bridges. Because, uh, you know, they are at the minute uh, clogging up the roads, which is fine, I suppose. And uh, this will definitely be the start of a new town centre. Uh, we'll begin some suburbs out here and do some nice little builds over here as well. But I feel like this episode... Don't want to focus too much on the building aspect um, of kind of you know the new public transport system. Uh, I really just want to kind of focus on how you guys can go ahead and review uh, your current existing public transport network and uh, make them a little more efficient and then um, you know get more people using them. Uh, you can see here just how busy uh, everybody is. Uh, lots of people coming and going. And, uh, you know, these guys here will definitely need a supporting uh, transport system to get them around. Because uh, right now there's so many people, all the tourists heading to this train station. Uh, a few of them heading into uh, the oil town, which is uh, fine, I guess. I wonder what they're going to see. Uh, and we'll build some uh, kind of public footpaths over to this side of town as well. Uh, so they don't have to use the road. Uh, but otherwise, guys, uh, that is going to be it. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I'll set up a little outro charge uh, of some of the busiest uh, public transport stations you can see just how much use they are getting again let's have a little double check of that figure right now so you see it's still increasing as time goes by and uh, it'll be really interesting uh, to see kind of some of the busiest stations in action so i'll go ahead and set that up but anyway thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed it a like below is very much appreciated equally if you didn't i understand this kind of episode won't be for everyone we haven't built too much this has really been kind of an admin episode uh, but, you know, it's still a part of the build guide, I guess, and how you guys can, um, you know, just rework your system a little bit. Thank you so much for watching. Um, really do appreciate it. And thank you for uh, 865 subscribers at the moment, I think. Just crazy. Uh, anyway, as always, enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs>